Oh, it's time for my favorite holiday of the year, Halloween. It is a holiday. Shut up. You know, Samhain, All Saints Day, All in Tide, Willow Smith's birthday. Okay, the latter should make it even more scary. But this is a time of year that has a lot of really fond memories for me. You know, running around the neighborhood with a pillowcase full of free mini candy, all the while wearing highly flammable plastic jumpsuits and vision-restricting masks. Ah, those were the days. That's actually kind of one of the sucky things about getting old. You can't dress up for Halloween anymore. Or can you? Most MMOs have some kind of observance for Halloween on their yearly calendar, but since it's not tied to any modern religion, they can actually call it Halloween without offending people. A lot of them are hosting costume contests or holding special events like World of Warcraft's Hallow's End, RuneScape's Death Con 2, DC Universe Online's Midnight Masquerade. Some are even going a step further, encouraging players to dress in costume in real life to play their game in the virtual world for a contest. Yeah, that's really happening. In all these games, players will have access to rare items in games. They're not all cosmetic. Some are actually pretty darn useful. Last year I got Mrs. Boo, and it gave me some great stat boosts, but the cosmetic items are what you mostly see. I kid you not when I say that there's been more skeletons running around DCUO than superheroes on some nights. Irony. Superheroes and supervillains wearing funny costumes. That's rich. But the whole thing kind of got me thinking, because, well, we spend a lot of time in MMOs trying to get the look exactly down right, and why? Well, I got a couple theories on the matter, and the first one is that it lets gamers do something that they just love to do. Brag. To be honest, in a shootout on our battleground, I'm not looking at people's costumes. I'm usually more concerned with we need to take the ammo depot more than I am admiring how someone matched their gloves to their helmet. But even in my horse blinders, I catch a couple things. If you look at what someone's wearing, you can get a clue to their skill level. Take Halo 4 for example, a lot of the armor and visors can only be unlocked after you've reached certain ranks or achieved specific things, so if you see someone in specific armor, it's a clue that they've dedicated a lot of their time to this game. It makes the armor kind of a billboard for the player's perceived skills. Or, in a lot of cases with Halo, it's a sign they've pre-ordered the game and they're flaunting it in your face. Now, I don't play Halo myself, and I can't confirm this, but I've been told it's very satisfying to shoot these guys in the face. Repeatedly. <clears throat> Well, the same thing kind of goes for MMOs. Now, before Transmog, World of Warcraft had a really easy way to tell the gear score of any given player. You just look at them. If they got the latest tier of armor, they're good. It created a really interesting phenomenon in that whole arenas would consist of players wearing the same armor style. The most savvy players could tell what class someone was just by looking at shoulder pieces from across the field. Now, after Transmog, it became a lot different. When players could change the appearance of their armor, it let us do several things. On a practical front, we could make sleepers. I could make my armor look worse than it really was, or find pieces that look like other class armors and try to fool opponents into either attacking me or not attacking me. And yes, it really worked. On a slightly less practical front, it allows us to customize our characters. Okay, yeah, there's something to be said about bragging about having that specific really cool armor piece, but a lot of times, if you want to achieve a look, the only way to get that is to have been there and done that. So the bragging about what you've done is just secondary. You're trying to tell us something about the character sometimes even about yourself. Oh, I should elaborate, as you wish. This requires some explanation. When you first see a character, you have to draw some immediate conclusions about it based on the limited information you have available. You've got a name, an appearance, and occasionally you'll know their class. Now, on occasion, the other player will be nice enough to put their class in their name somehow. On a related note, if you play PvP and your name has the word healer in it, you're gonna get killed a lot, just saying. But also understand that on our end of the screen, we spend hours looking at these characters, so we want to make them look as pleasing as possible. And to sometimes it's just, it'd be cool to have this armor piece, and sometimes it's, hey, that really makes sense for this character. So let's make an example out of this guy. He's wearing really heavy armor, and that conveys an expectation that you need to wear it. If you expect to get shot at, you're going to have to wear heavier armor to protect yourself. Compared to something like uh, this, which doesn't look as combat worthy. So, in this guy's case, the look is there to convey, I'm ready for heavy duty firefights. Now, to some extent, game companies kind of understand this concept. When you compare Master Chief's armor to what modern ground soldiers wear, it's not even comparable. 
However, you look at Master Chief and you say he's here for a firefight. That's kind of why Vel's old WoW designed PvP armor looked like this. It makes him look large and imposing. It looks like he could absorb a lot of damage. Meanwhile, I made his PvE armor look like this because it seemed more appropriate for a hunter than the monstrosity they create for top tiers. Seriously, how's this even practical? The appearance of the armor is one thing, but the color? That's a huge part of this, because we will spend hours tweaking the colors to get it to look exactly right. Because the colors that you choose, and what those colors represent, is almost as important as the physical structure of the armor itself to get a look down. Oh, yeah, right. As with before, sometimes it's purely practical. Brighter colors are easier to spot, darker ones not so much, but colors also carry more weight than that. Let's go back to this guy. The colors, the wings, the armor, it's not hard to get the character concept. The armor tells part of the story, but the colors add a cultural context. Actually, there's kind of a fun and interactive way we can describe this. Now, I'm going to show you two colors. Immediately, what comes to mind? If you said Halloween, I really can't blame you. There's plenty of holidays which can be brought to mind with just adding a few colors. You know, Christmas, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Fourth of July, well, in America anyway. Well, heck, I could even argue where you live, the colors have specific meaning. For example, if you live in the UK, these colors mean one thing, and in the US, they mean another. Y you know, actually, I could start a small war by saying that these colors represent this and not that. Have fun in the comments, guys. My point is that your color selection tells a lot more about yourself and your character than you might think, because as you're trying to tweak your armor set to look that perfect shade of blue, there's a reason why it strikes a chord. It's because you're tapping into a collective consciousness. Which actually brings me to one more point. I gotta talk cosplaying here, if even only just briefly. One of the rules of my livestream drinking game is that if you see someone that looks like a DC or Marvel character, take a drink. Okay, this isn't really fair, because DC character creation actually includes templates based on the popular heroes and villains, but that doesn't stop the flood from Marvel cosplayers. It usually comes in waves. We had a rash of Hulks for a while, then a rash of Deadpools, a bunch of X-Men. Right now it's Wolverine for some reason. Now, if someone can make mean, I'd be impressed. But this isn't even to mention characters based on other sources, too. I mean, I've seen Mario, Pokemon, religious figures, anime, Rockstar, video games, 90s cartoons, 80s cartoons, 80s TV shows. The fact that your costume is accurate down to the tiniest detail does not change the fact that that TV show sucks. You get the idea. I really want to give this its own full show because it's part real life phenomenon too and I really don't want to go into something like this just halfway. I hate to say it, but to do it true justice it takes a lot more research than I have time for this week. But for now, let me just say this. There is a lot of dedication to the craft and it's not going away anytime soon. Thankfully. Now with all that in mind, it kind of begs the question. Why would anybody in their right mind spend hours days, weeks, sometimes even months, grinding, farming, hunting the auction house, adventuring, just to get a costume for a character that really doesn't exist. Now for some people the answer is going to be simple as, well, it looks cool, lulls. I kind of get that. For other people it's going to be a matter of bragging, and I kind of get that too. But I think there's just a little bit more to it than that. And this might just be myself projecting this, but I know I can't be alone. I kind of miss Halloween. Forgive the get off my lawn moment here, but um, there's this unspoken rule in our society. It says that once you pass a certain age, it becomes unacceptable to put on a costume and play pretend, even on Halloween. Well, unless you're accompanied by a child, in which case you're just humoring the child. But the exact age is never really said. I think it's somewhere around the mid-twenties. You're given a free pass in college because it's just assumed you're on your way to or your way from alcohol. There's very few exceptions to this rule, but even then, society mocks them from behind the internet. People like cosplayers, furry, sci-fi fans, they get a pass, but only while at conventions or big events. The other exception is virtual space. I'm allowed to play a techno dragon, or an elf, or a char, or an orc, or anything else for that matter, because it's part of the game. I'm allowed to dress the character up any way I want to, because it's a show of dedication and skill. There is justification. There is permission. I think a lot of these players, there's a similar feeling going on. Keep in mind that according to the ESA, the average age of a gamer is 30 years old, and a lot of these gamers have kids of their own, so they probably have to at least pretend to be adults now. People say that youth is wasted on the young, and this is probably what they mean. You know, it's kind of ironic that as adults, we need permission to play pretend. 
You know, you spend your entire youth waiting to grow up so you can do anything you want, and then you find out you can't. That said, some of us have found ways to rebel against the system. Have a happy Halloween, guys. <laughs>perfectly honest, I don't mind the new outfit, but I do miss the hard hat. If they ever put one in the game, bro, I'll get one for you, I promise.